Judges chapter 10. And after Abimelech, there arose to defend Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shemar in Mount Ephraim. So again, there's time that Israel went and failed and God sent them a judge. And he judged Israel 20 and three years and died and was buried in Shamar. Some judges get longer than the others. And after him rose Jar, 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 a Gilead, and judged Israel 20 and two years. And he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts, and they had 30 cities, which are called Havar Jar unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. That's interesting information. And the Lord throws stuff in there like that. And you're reading your Bible, oh, boring, 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 boring. And then you throw something in there, and that has importance. I haven't found a nugget yet. But I'll tell you one thing, ask cults. I know Jesus Christ comes in Jerusalem on an ass cult. And Jared died and was buried in Camon. And the children of Israel did evil again in sight of the Lord. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And Sir Balaam, that's Baal, plural. And Ashtra, that's the queen of heaven. And the gods of Syria, which is today current news, Syria. And the gods of Zidon. And the gods of Moab, that's across the Jordan River. And the gods of the children of Naaman, that's across the Jordan River. And the gods of the Philistines, that's up by the Mediterranean Sea. And forsook the Lord and served not him. So they got all these gods that they were supposed to wipe out. And they crossed the Jordan River and gained more gods. And it's, you got one, two, three, four, five gods here. Five is the number of death. Added with Ashtoreth. Added with Baal. There's a whole bunch of gods, small G-O-D-S, floating around in Israel. And they forsook the Lord. They didn't take God. They didn't have Jehovah God and these gods. They got rid of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and served not him. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. <laughs> and he sold them into the hands of Philistines. And into the hands of the children of Amon, now he sold them. What price would the Philistines and the Amorites want? The, the land. And that's what's going on today. I mean, yeah, Israel's in their land, but they got everybody that's in the land also. They got war, they got problems, they got battles, they got enemies. Had they in Joshua and the first couple chapters of Judges gotten rid of these nations, got rid of Philistine, we wouldn't be reading about these gods. This is why God told them in the book of Moses, get rid of these gods. Tear down their images, break down their idols, break down the, the altars. And they don't. And here they are. And we are in the state, we are in the same point of view that America's in today. You were supposed to come to this country and forsake your land and become American, speak English, and learn the American ways and build yourself up. Today in America, they bring their customs, they bring their gods, they bring their traditions. They want us to learn their language. And stupid America said, yeah, okay, okay. God bless America, and they're getting tired of that. You'll see them get rid of God bless America within time, off the money and wherever else it is. Because it's a joke, because God is not blessing America, and America doesn't bless God. It offends me. It offends. Well, you offend me. How come I can't do nothing? Yeah. How come I got to hear people tooting their horns and their music? That, isn't, that offends me. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. 
You imagine getting God hot, angry against you? Now they are his people. Israel is his people, so it's not uh, the wrath of hell. I'll just send your enemies like he wrote in the book of Moses. I'll curse you seven times more if you don't. And seven times more. I'll call your enemies. Verse 8. In that year, they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. Eighteen years. Eighteen years. And all the children of Israel that were on the other side of Jordan, in the land of Amorites, which is Gilead. This is the wrong side of the land. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah. Here comes everybody now. And against Benjamin. This is the, the proper side. This is the promised land. And against the house of Ephraim. So that Israel was sore distressed. Israel's getting it from all sides. Because they chose chosen other gods. This is what the church is doing too. The church is following other gods other ways. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. So there are, there are more gods mentioned than just that. They forgot some gods. Verse 6. 6, the number of man. 18, 666. So they're not really confessing all their sins. They're just some of them. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the from the Egyptians? Yes. From the Amorites? Correct. From the children of Ammon? Absolutely true. And from the Philistines? Absolutely true. The Zidonians also? Yep, Lord. And the Amorites? Yes. The Mananites? Yep. Did oppress you and you cried to me and I delivered you out of their hands. Absolutely correct. You did. You gave us a victory and we failed. You gave us a victory, we failed. You gave us a victory, we failed. It's like a broken record. Yet, ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Now look, let's see, we served Balaam, which means gods, plural, but there are more to just Balaam, the gods mentioned in verse 6. See, God does not want a half repentance. Okay, Balaam, you got that. Okay, what about Ashtoreth? What about the gods of Syrians, the gods of Zidonia, the gods of Moab? To go at, well, what about those gods? Why didn't you confess those? Serve other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. I'm done with you. I've had it with you. Now watch what God says, verse 14. Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you into the time of your tribulation. Notice tribulation. Notice that word that shows up. That's an interesting word for Israel. Let the Antichrist take care of you. Let the beast take care of you. Let the false prophet take care of you. Let those gods take care of you. Now that must have been crying, trial, panicking words from the prophet or from God himself talking to Israel. I'm done with you. You let those gods take care of you. The gods are not doing very good, are they, with Philistines and the Amorites and the Moabites and everybody coming in and attacking them. Those gods are not doing very good, are they? They're loser gods. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. He's mad at them. Oh Lord, do whatever you... <laughs> Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. They know God's angry and do what is good, seemeth good unto thee. <laughs> God's doing already what seems good unto him. He's brought the enemies in to wake them up. Right there, God says, that's good enough. And bringing the enemy into the land has brought God to the point with Israel exactly where they are. They're acknowledging their sin. And God will put trials and tribulations one way into our lives and say, hey, you got a wake-up call. Something wrong. Not always. 
But trials and tribulations and troubles in our life, one of the means can be God's trying to get us to repent and get right. We've gone off the track. We've gone off the road. We're going our own way. And they put away the strange gods from among them. Now that's true repentance. That's not just not, oh, we're sorry, Lord, and say this prayer and go off. And No, they put those gods away and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved, God's soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Now let's go back to Joshua 24. In 24... Verse 20, these people have done something that even in Joshua's time they didn't do. In Joshua 24, 20, if you forsake the Lord and serve other gods, sound familiar? Strange gods. Then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after he has done you good. That sounds like what we're reading. And the people said unto Joshua, nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods, which are among you. Incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve. His voice we will obey. And Joshua made a covenant, but, 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 but there is no because over here in Judges, God recorded they got rid of those strange gods. In J Joshua 24, there is no recording. They kept those gods that were with them. In the crucifixes, the crosses, the, the clothes, the dollies. But when you read Judges chapter 10, they got rid of them like Jacob did. When he came to that oak, he said, all right, everybody hand them over. And he digs a hole and he buries those gods because they're dead. And when they do that, God says, okay, okay, you've done exactly what I wanted you to do. And you can't walk up to God and say half a prayer, half a repentance, and expect God to, okay, that's good and fine. You gotta have a full, true repentance. Now you may walk, you may get saved and have some sins attached to you. But if you are battling those sins and you don't want to do it, and your flesh keeps doing it, and you're agonizing with God, and you're pleading with God, and you're crying with God, your heart wants to get rid of it. Because we're all sinners. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. And the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled them together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Whoever is going to be, take care of us, whoever is going to help us, God's going to lead us. We're going to make him a leader of us. Notice it doesn't say king. We had a king problem in chapter 9 in Limanek. We're not going to do that again. So we'll make him head, and look how the chapter ends. There is no deliverance. In this chapter, we've got to continue tomorrow night, Lord willing, for the deliverance. And when you see the word tribulation in verse 14, you're going to go through those seven years, those Jews are going to go through seven years of tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation, and it's going to end with troubles and problems, and then comes the next chapter, the next point in the future prophecy of the era of the Jews would be then comes the deliverer Jesus Christ but you gotta go through it all those Jews in the tribulation period are gonna go through those seven years and those seven years are gonna be to the date seven years and at the end then comes the deliverer because they got all kinds of gods they got all kinds of gods now 
Jerusalem is surrounded by gods. Even Baptist gods go over there, oh, we're in a holy city, isn't this great? It's a mess. 